So on this segment of Wealth Psychology at Sylvia Global Media, we are diving into toxins in our environments, and this time we're going to be talking about what we're putting on our bodies. We have as our special guest today Beth Greer, who's author of Supernatural Home, and she uh, was able to make a tumor in her body, a mass, disappear without any drugs, without any surgery. She did it all or with changing her diet and also what she put on her body. And we're going to be talking about what we need to look out for when we're putting things on our bodies because a lot of us are like oh I'm gonna eat organic and I'm gonna eat healthy but then we'll go to the drugstore and buy you know the cheapest uh, hair product or the the large bottle of um, Vaseline lotion or so what do we need to know in terms of what we're putting on our bodies Beth? Okay well as I mentioned in the first segment that our skin is not the barrier that we think it is it, it really does allow in microscopic chemicals and think about the the, the nicotine patch that people use or nitroglycerin patches or um, the bioidentical hormone creams, it, it gets into your system. So all these creams and lotions that we're putting on our skin, have, they have an effect on us. They, they have something known as hormone disruptors. So we need to pay attention and, and really, you know, one of the big things now, that- Now, wait a minute. If I'm putting a hormone cream on my body, don't I want it to be a hormone disruptor? Or are you saying any, anything I put on my body? I'm talking, right, those are the ones that you want to have an effect okay. on your hormones. But you, want, you don't want to have your, uh, your face makeup, let's say, uh, impacting your hormones as well. So um, one of the things that can impact your hormones is uh, fragr or fragrances, actually. Really? Uh, Yes. And so for a, if the word fragrance on the label can mean up to a hundred different synthetic chemicals in that one word. It's a catchphrase that the manufacturers use. And so uh, some things are very highly fragranced and, you know, sometimes they can last for hours. That shouldn't be. And you'll know if you if you uh, use a product that you can smell hours later, you know that it, that it has chemicals in there that's designed to make the product last longer. Oh, like when you walk into an elevator and it's empty and it's completely filled with that horrible smell or, or like an intense smell that you weren't, that nobody's even in there and you're smelling it. That's like right. That? That's, that's exactly right. Wow. Yes. I went on a date last week with a really nice man. I had a nice time. We hugged goodnight and I came home and I reeked of the cologne he was wearing and I literally had to go in and take a shower because it was so intense. And I felt like marked. It was really quite awful. So you're saying that that's also toxic for me? It wasn't just, wait a second, that's his cologne? I've had that experience as well. And, and, and imagine like wearing that all the time. You, it, it is it's having an impact on, on the system. And so, um, you know, do you think about the deodorant that you use, for example. M many of them are highly uh, scented. And also, they contain things like parabens, which are um, antimicrobial uh, chemicals that are put in there that, that are not really great for us. So you want to pay attention, on, read on the label. And, you know, one of the great easy things that I use is um, baking soda deodorant. So, I, you know, even just either Arm & Hammer or even, you know, Whole Foods makes a, where is it? Oh, the 365? Yeah. Soda. And it works. And it's, it's the only awesome. ingredient on the box, right? It's just baking That's soda. Right. And it's been around forever. You but know, does I, it have aluminum in it? Because I heard that aluminum is really bad. Yeah, you know, it may have trace amounts of aluminum, and so you can find some non-aluminum uh, baking soda. But, you know, I really think that we don't want to get crazy about, you know, going nuts about being hyper vigilant about this stuff. Just start simply. Start with, um, you know, if you can make one change, Start with either your lipstick or your deodorant. Um, now, why would I need to change my lipstick? Well, you know, a lot of a lot of the conventional lipsticks contain lead, and there's been studies that shows that show this very often. There's a great website um, uh, the Environmental Working Group has that you can log on to um, safecosmetics.org and and you can check out your lipsticks and see how they rank. Well, that's an extraordinary thing to think that something I'm putting on my lips right next to my tongue, you know, that's going to be an impact. Like, I'm not licking my lips all the time, but lead, I mean, I, everybody knows you're not supposed to have lead in your side of your body. Right, there's, no, it, there's really no safe levels of lead. But, you know, you are licking your lips all the time. I mean, how, how, 
how long does your lipstick really last? Every couple of hours, you, you might need to, to use it. So where is it going? It's going inside of you. Right, and not only that, I mean, I can think about when I take a drink of water and I put lipstick on, I can see it sometimes on the glass, and who's to say that that water is not washing some of that down, too, when I'm drinking? So, wow, this is really important. So lipstick with lead, and then you know, i got to ask you, I'm, I am a pretty conventional person, and for me, deodorant is a spray or a roll-on, and you just showed me a box of powder, and I'm, like, I'm completely mystified how on earth you put that on as a deodorant. I should, I should have brought my salt shaker. Um, it's upstairs, but... I put it in a, 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 just a, a salt shaker with, you know, it has uh, medium-sized holes. And then I take it and I sprinkle it in my hand, the palm of my hand. And then I go like this. <laughs> and it's, it, it totally works right after you shower. So your armpits are a little bit moist. And I'm telling you, it lasts the whole day. So, I, you know, one of my clients is uh, down in Southern California. She's a yoga teacher. And she said to me, you know, I sweat a lot and this is not going to work. I know it. And I said, well, just give it a, give it a try. And she called me the next day. She said, this is unbelievable. So it doesn't stop the wetness, but it stops any trace of odor. Wow. That's terrific. That's such a good hint. And like tip for anybody who's looking at, wow, how can I make a subtle, small change? And what about those uh, deodorants that are like uh, a rock or uh, a crystal? Like they, they say that that's supposed to be better for you. Is that another option? It's another option, sure. Uh, you know, it, it says that it's made from alum, which is a, a derivative of aluminum. Um, I think they're probably fine. Again, you know, don't get crazy about it. Just try to make some small but significant changes. Look, we have everyone has so much to do and so much to think about. We don't want to start getting paranoid about everything in our lives. What so, I'm getting? Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm just so, I, you know, I really, I, I want people to just think about one or two things that they can do in their home. So whether it's just starting with the food that you eat most often, so let's say if it's, if it's dairy, you know, you want to eat organic and if it's, um, and if it's the, your cosmetics or personal care products, pick one thing to start with and then just see how that goes. So uh, we, we can look at food labels and we can do research that way. And then we can also um, uh, go onto a website about safe cosmetics and look at what the ingredients are and the cosmetics we're using. So those are some really good tips. Um, and it sounds like the less ingredients that are in something, typically the better it is. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes, yeah, so the less ingredients. And you, you want to just look for like instead of the word fragrance, look for the words essential oil. Um, that would be a really good substitute. And one key, I wanna just give you a little tip. Look for the words made with. Oh. So if you see the words made with essential oil, it could mean only there's one drop of essential oil or 1%. So you wanna look for something that says made with 100% essential oil. But made with is, is really like um, that kind of tricky, greenwashing, um, it's, it's, a, it's a misleading phrase that manufacturers get away with. So sometimes like a loaf of bread may say made with whole grains. It's not, it should say 100% whole grains if that's what you're looking for. Well, that's really useful. So reading labels and being smart about how we read the labels. And uh, sounds like essential oils might be a nice alternative to the um, the, if I love wearing fragrances and I uh, like to smell good, um, I know I enjoy using rose water. I find that to be a lovely um, thing, and all it has is the uh, the water and the rose scent. So, I mean, it, it seems like the, the less you use in terms of ingredients and then the more natural, like an essential oil instead of fragrance. That's That's what I'm hearing. Absolutely right. And rose water is fantastic, yes. Yeah. Wow. Well, anything else in terms of, um, like, personal care products that we should really watch out for, like in terms of like soaps that we wash with or shampoos or, you know, what should we look out for? There's, I heard parabens yeah, and let's, fragrance. Let's talk about soap for a minute because there's a really big, there's a big issue around something uh, called triclosan, which is in anything that you see that says antibacterial. So uh, doctors are saying that regular soap and water works just as well as an antibacterial soap. And what's happening is triclosan is actually a pesticide, and so they're putting it in our soap. So um, it's found in our rivers and streams. It's found in our dolphins and whales. You know, it's found up in the Arctic. It's everywhere. It's been, it's it's this persistent um, ingredient, 
and chemical that doesn't need to be there and you don't need to buy anything that has a triclosan in it. It's just not, it's unnecessary. And it's also causing anti, antibacterial resistance. So, um, you know, people who are using all these antibacterial uh, soaps are, can create really havoc. It's almost like you're getting too clean um, and it, it can create problems down the down the road. Oh, and you're, yeah, you're talking about the thing like where superbugs can get created because they build a, up a resistance to the very thing that's supposed to kill them. So we're actually creating, I, I've heard that, like if you go to a, um, like a hospital where they have the antibacterial thing, if you study the, the bacteria around that, it's more resistant to that than anything else. So yes, that's exactly right. Wow. So look, so if you, if you're buying liquid hand soap, a lot of people like that, make sure it doesn't say antibacterial on there and, and look, look on the back and it'll, you know, look for the word triclosan and just avoid it. And the other thing is they're putting triclosan in toothpaste now. So a, a Colgate Total, for example, has triclosan in it and it's really um, very toxic. You know, it, it, it's, um, it's so unnecessary and um, dentists are sort of just handing this out to people because they're getting it from the manufacturer and it's really uh, not not a not a well, great thing. To this is so distressing because these are you're talking about like name brands that we've grown up with that we trust that are familiar that have a lot of recognition and then our dentists who we trust and this is really about empowering the consumer and empowering the individual to look at and say hey what is in this and I have a right to know what this in in this and if I read something and I don't know what it is thank goodness we have the internet because I could type in a word on a label that's like, what is a triglyceride? And, and then have it come up and have it tell me, no, this is a, a dangerous chemical to use in my body. Um, and, you know, I, I don't typically read the ingredients on my toothpaste. I, that's never occurred to me. And I, it's, it's odd because I'm putting it in my mouth, but I never have. And I, I imagine there's quite a few things that are around my space that I, I put on my body that I don't look at the ingredients on. Right. That's why I, I want you to become a label sleuth, you know, and the thing is, it's not, not all Colgate products are bad. It's, it's Colgate Total, which has triclosan and unnecessary. So if you love Colgate and you want to continue to use it, fine, but just pick one of their other varieties. Right. It, and make sure that they haven't put it in other ones since this show has come on. I mean, that's the thing is like we change keeps happening. Manufacturers keep doing this. Heaven knows why. And I think the other thing is consumers can actually make a difference. Like, I, there was a phenomenal uh, video that went viral, and we're going to talk about this in the next segment, actually. We're going to talk about what we put in our environments, what is in our, um, our living space and our workspace that impacts us and our health, and what we can do about that, and also how we can be empowered as people, as consumers, to take care of our own lives and even maybe um, in a more a larger way in terms of changing corporations and what they're putting into these things.